So now that we've seen this divide between the Eulerian cycle problem, which is relatively easy to solve, and the Hamiltonian cycle problem, which is a difficult problem to solve, we're going to bring this back to see what these have to do with genome assembly. So remember our goal was to use the overlapping reads um, taken from a DNA data set in order to reconstruct that original genome. So we needed to overlap these and get a contiguous original genome. And our idea is to say, well, why don't, because we encountered some difficulties there, why don't we use a network to represent this overlapping information? It's a great way of visualizing the connections between things, and our connections are going to be the overlaps. So we might say, we've got, say, 10 reads for this example. Let's create a node for every single one of them. So we can bring down and say GTG, GCG, GCA, and so on. And I'm just going through that diagram left to right in no particular order. And we wind up with 10 nodes, one for each one of our reads. And so we'll say, we need to connect them based off of whether or not they overlap. And so we'll say, let's just define the prefix as the first, every nucleotide but the last one, and the suffix as the last two nucleotides, so every nucleotide but the first one. And so we're trying to overlap these reads based off of prefixes and suffixes. So different, different um, threemers, or strings of link three, can share a prefix and a suffix. So CTG and ATG share a suffix, ATG and TGA, overlap because they share a, a suffix and a prefix. And so we can connect, start connecting nodes based off of this overlap and the prefixes and the suffixes. So we can say ATG is going to connect to TGG and TGC because the suffix of, of ATG overlaps with and matches with the prefix of both TGG and TGC. I've highlighted that as TG. And so we can just go through the network and say at each node, what does it overlap with? CGT for example, needs to overlap with only GTG, so we connect those two with an edge. And GGC connects to GCA and GCG. You'll notice these are one directional, they're directed edges, because the, the reverse fact that GCA overlaps with GGC, for example, is not necessarily true. It could be true, and if that's the case, then we're going to draw an edge there. But in this case, we're going to have one-way connections. So you can imagine, you can start to see how we fill in this network. At each stage, we just look for which nodes have prefixes matching the current suffix. And in this way, we wind up constructing our network. So then we say, well, we're trying to touch every single one of those nodes because we want to use all our reads. And as we walk through this network, we're connecting nodes based off of overlap. So I really want to find a walk through the network that touches every node exactly once. And that's a Hamiltonian cycle. So here I'm going to point out a Hamiltonian cycle to you. We can start at ATG and go over to TGG. And notice that they overlap at TG. And then TGG goes to GGC and they overlap in GG and so on. So we keep walking through the network. And I'm going to show you that we eventually use all the nodes that I'm highlighting in green once they're done. So we get to GCA, CAA, AAT. And then we're back to ATG. And this was just a walk in a network. All right. Then when we look at what that actually meant, when we see the reads, we can say, well, ATG overlapped with TGG, and that overlapped with GGC. So we can start at the bottom reconstructing this genome, which I said was going to be a single circular chromosome. So it's going to be in one piece and circular. And so we just walk through and write the genome at the bottom. And eventually we hit the starting point again, and we kind of wrap around where we started. So that ATG is, we're going to have an ATG at the beginning and an ATG at the end. And if we were going to publish this, you know, we'd say, well, that ATG is, is kind of repeated twice. There's no reason for that. Um, and we're writing this circular genome as a linear um, string, ATG, GC, GT, GCA. And that's our genome. So we have this very precise way of using a network to consolidate all the information represented in the overlaps between our reads. And this will give us an answer to the problem. But there's one critical issue. The question is, what's wrong with that? And the critical point is, is that think about how big this network is going to be. If we have millions or close to a billion uh, nodes in the network, so, or close to a billion reads, it means that we're going to have an enormous network. And we're looking for a Hamiltonian cycle in that network, which means we need to solve this Hamiltonian cycle problem on that network in, or, in order to obtain a candidate genome. And that, were, that make, brings us back to that issue that even though Hamiltonian cycle problem seems very similar to the Eulerian cycle problem, 
we don't have an efficient algorithm for solving it. So if we model our problem as a Hamiltonian cycle problem, we're going to get stuck. And so maybe our, a better idea would be to say, well, if we know that the Eulerian cycle problem is easier to solve, why don't we model genome assembly using an Eulerian cycle problem? So we can form a different network as follows. We're going to create a node for every distinct prefix and suffix from our reads, and that may not seem um, like the most obvious thing in the world, but the point is, is that our goal is to get the reads on the edges before the reads were on the nodes, and then we were led to the Hamiltonian cycle problem. If we can map the reads to edges, then maybe we can find every read, and that's going to be every edge, and that's going to be an Eulerian problem. So we're going to say, let's look at GTG. That's our first read. So GT is a prefix, and TG is a suffix, and the read is GTG. So maybe we'll connect those two, and I'm going to show you that here in a second. For now, I'm just going to form the rest of the nodes. So we go through and we say, every time we see a new prefix or suffix, like CA there, we form a node for it. Otherwise, our AT is new, but TG is not new. So we don't form new nodes here. We just walk through the reads, and every time we see a new prefix or suffix, we form a new node. But if we've seen the same thing, we just note that we've already seen it. And so eventually we get to AA there at CAA, and that's the same as AAT, and then AAT um, has suffix AT, which is already present. So we get eight nodes from this. And then the question is, what are the edges? Well, we wanted the reads to be the edges. So if I connect um, a, an edge, uh, a read's prefix to its suffix, that's going to assign the read to that edge. So we could say, for example, it's always easier to see it with the example. For example, we know that GTG was one of our reads. Why don't we connect GT to TG? And we know GCG was one of our reads. Why don't we connect GC to CG? And we connect GC to CA for GCA. And you can see now which edges we're, we're drawing in this diagram. And so we wind up with another network in which the reads correspond to edges. And we still have overlap. So for example, you notice that if you start at AT, and walk to TG, then that is the read ATG. And then if, we, if you continue, you can go to TGG or TGC, and you still see the overlap. Okay, But the difference is that the reads are now on our edges. And so I'll point out that there is an Eulerian cycle in this network. And maybe you see it. So for example, ATG, TGG, GGC, and we walk around the square, and then back through to TGC and then over to CA, and then through CAA and AAT. And now that's interesting because that's the exact same sequence of reads that we found before. So we can overlap all those edges, right? We can write out what the reads are that correspond to those edges, overlap all of them, and then start inferring the genome at the bottom and reconstruct that circular genome. Now, and of course we'd have the ATG at the end that we would cross off. But the only difference is that a computer is going to be able to find the Eulerian cycle in this network very quickly. So whereas before when we modeled this as a Hamiltonian cycle problem, then we ran into trouble because that's a difficult problem to solve on a big network. But if we model this as an instance of the Eulerian cycle problem, then we get something that's a lot easier to solve, even for a network that's very big, even for a network that comes from a data set that is close to a billion reads we're able to use a computer to, in a reasonable amount of time, find an Eulerian cycle and reconstruct a candidate genome. And so this method of taking the reads, converting them into a network in which the reads are assigned to edges, and finding an Eulerian cycle um, in this network, or perhaps an Eulerian path, that approach serves as the foundation for sequencing algorithms that are running around the world all the time. Um, and sequencing genomes from all different types of species as well as humans. Um, so that, I think, is a really cool thing to see kind of what the um, computational side of this problem is and how important that is and how this problem could not be solved without um, not just the use of computers, but the use of very clever methods when we think about how we're going to program those computers. And that, in many senses, is what the computational side of biology is all about. Now, I wanted also to talk about some practical complications with genome assembly since we've been assuming perfect data sets that we're given, um, and I'll talk about those practical complications in the next section.